Coming up on this edition of Red Raider Report. We're back in the building. We'll hear from students and staff who are happy that virtual learning is a thing of the past. The PHS Melodrama debuts this weekend. We'll tell you how to get tickets for the big show. And Jack of All Sports will get you caught up on all the Raider sports action. All this and more coming up on your Raider Report. And thanks for joining us. I'm Riley Miller. And I'm Mickey Wirtz. Welcome back, Raiders. After nearly a year, the Raider Nation is back together. It's been a long haul for students and staff, juggling synchronous and asynchronous learning, virtual and face-to-face -face schedules, cohort A and cohort B days. But hopefully that's all behind us now. And students and staff alike are glad we're back at good old PHS. I think that, you know, everyone coming back is just really beneficial for everyone because it's, you know, you lose motivation and it just gets you moving in school. And I really like everyone coming back to school because it's nice seeing everyone's faces and just with the split cohorts, it's like you can't see all of your friends every day. So it's nice that everyone can see each other. It's very strange. I mean, f with all this going on, we basically turned the normal into being weird. So definitely an adaptation for everybody. It's definitely nice, but I do have some concerns with people already not really wearing their masks consistently or just like, I don't know. It's nice, but it, there's also there are problems with it. I kind of wish I was laying in bed, to be honest, but like, <laughs> I like being here. Um, I say the same thing. Oh, I think it's pretty lit. We're able to be here with all our friends and we're able to vibe together. Um, it's pretty cool seeing all my friends that I haven't seen for a year. It's a lot different. I mean, sometimes virtual could get clunky and you're just sitting there looking at an iPad, but at the same time, it kind of, it'll take a lot of getting used to to being around everybody again, because for a while you'd see your dog maybe once a day during a school day, and now I'm seeing hundreds of people at a time. So it's interesting and nice that we can do this, but it'll take a while to get back used to the groove. I think having all the students back is like perfect. I mean, there's a bigger energy in the air. You can see that there's bigger step with the kids. I mean, everybody seems to be a little bit more happy now that everybody's back. Well, I absolutely love it. We have the chance to dive into some labs and get our hands on items. Of course, uh, one per student, and we are enjoying that. So it's great to have a full class full of energy, ready to rock and roll, and hopefully for the rest of the school year. I absolutely love it. Yeah, I went into teaching uh, a long, long time ago. In fact, I went to school at the age of five, and I've never left. And started teaching in 1984, and this has been the oddest experience of my entire career. And I couldn't be happier to be back with the kids. Thanks, Nick and Jack, for that great episode of Heard in the Hall. We are so glad it's back. It certainly is good to be back in school, but in order to continue on the path, there are steps we all need to take. The PHS administrative team offers a few helpful reminders in this week's Admin Minute. Please remember to clean in every morning when you enter the building and when you enter and exit any classroom. Social distancing is important as we all are here in the building to be mindful of how far apart you are from others. Don't forget there's new masks available at each entrance as you come in to the building. As a reminder, we need to remain socially distanced when we're moving about the building. That means we can't hang out at some of our favorite spots. This also means not sitting in the comments unless it is a lunch mod. Please be certain to be wearing your mask appropriately. This means covering your nose and your mouth. Not one or the other, but both. Remember Raiders, if we all do the little things right, good things will happen. Let's work together to have a safe, healthy, and in-person second semester. In other news, six Pulaski High School business students are on their way to state competition. The annual DECA district level event took place late last month at the PHS contingent had a significant return on investment. Ella Fakari and Maggie Jandrick are both freshmen who medaled in their role play category, finishing in second place overall. Junior Connor Heason medaled in role play and the test portion, earning third place. Seniors Ann Abshire and Bennett Handridge completed in travel and tourism team decision making and medaled in role play. And junior Joe Lee Klingheisen competed in hotel and lodging management and medaled in role play. DECA student advisor Mrs. Bronchek is excited about how the competition went. 
Um, it went really well, and I'm really proud of everybody who competed, um, and especially those who did place. Um, and we're hoping for a lot more competitors next year. So, uh, But also really excited for our state in the next few weeks. The state deck of competition will take place next month. Good luck, Raiders. Uh, speaking of PHS students achieving great things, Melodrama has finished producing an off-the-wall show. This play features a nerdy superhero geek who draws ridiculous superheroes, such as Star Guy, Triple Time, Blossom, and Wombat Woman. The heroes take on an evil yet charismatic supervillain named Dr. Shock Clock. Get your QR code readers ready if you'd like to see the comic book artist. The show premieres online tonight at 7 p.m. and will be available until Sunday, February 14th at 10 p.m. You may be wondering, how in the world do I get to see such an awesome show? You'll need to purchase a ticket, just like you would for any other PHS theater production. If you scan the QR code on your screen, it will take you to a secure website where you can purchase tickets. For a mere $5, you can take in a great show this weekend. An innocent boy, an insecure girl, a sadistic dentist, a greedy shop owner, and a bloodthirsty plant. You'd be surprised by the kind of people you'll find downtown in this year's musical, Little Shop of Horrors. Auditions are complete. The show is casted and rehearsals started this week for this upbeat, dark comedy. Little Shop of Horrors premieres at the end of April. The COVID-19 pandemic forced every department at PHS to think outside the box when it comes to running classes. One department in particular had to halt lessons in learning in the, tra in the traditional sense, but reporter Lindsay Sequest tells us that the PHS music department is starting second semester on a much happier note. <laughs> The return to school, one thing that you may hear is music coming from the band and choir room again. To start the year off, band and choir students were unable to play or sing due to the amount of bioaerosol particles emitted while creating music. However, recent studies proved that it is once again safe to resume music making as long as certain guidelines were followed. Now that we are back, we have gotten the permission to be able to sing in class, but we can't do it without masks. So we have to have a new mask every time that we have choir and the at the end of class they get rid of the masks to get rid of um, all the extra exhalation. The masks were not the only thing put in place to help protect students and staff and stop the spread of COVID-19 in the choir room. As you enter the choir room you may notice X's taped on the floor marking a six foot distance from the chair next to them. With the size of the choir room compared to the size of the choirs, Mrs. Brown also had to place chairs in each of the practice rooms so everyone has a seat during class. Along with that, they are still unable to sing for the full 55 minutes so they spend part of their time analyzing and getting a better understanding on the pieces they are putting together as well as developing other musical skills. While most of the choir events were canceled, there's one event that is still going on that the choir is preparing for. Um, we're going to have virtual solo and ensemble and we're preparing for that um, and the students are singing music that they would normally sing just six feet apart and um, we break into groups so that we don't have everybody singing the whole time. The band also had to make some adjustments. We have masks that allow them to use their mouthpieces and whatnot along with bell covers and an actual uh, furnace filter that goes under the bell cover that cre keeps the aerosols from coming out. So we actually get to play together in school, so that's been a great plus. Just like choir, the band room is also spread out. We are um, sectioned apart by uh, a minimum of five feet left and right and six feet front to back. Unless you get to those uh, trombone players, those guys with the long slide, they have to be nine feet behind someone because of the fact that the uh, possibly might move aerosols further. The odds of having an in-person concert this year are low. The music department is just glad to be back together creating music and sharing their passion with others. We're glad to be back and we're glad to be making music together. It certainly is nice to hear students singing in choir and playing their instruments as we head down the music hallway once again. Something else that is music to people's ears are, I donated blood today. And you have the opportunity to say those words next week. Pulaski High School Student Council and American Red Cross are hosting another blood drive. It will take place at New Life Community Church on Crest Drive in Pulaski 
on Wednesday, February 17th from 8.15 a.m. to 1.15 p.m. Those who donate will receive a $5 Amazon gift card as a thank you. You can schedule your appointment on the American Cross website. We hope you'll consider donating blood to help the Red Cross fulfill its mission to save lives. And now for your favorite bi-weekly sports show in the greater Green Bay area. It's Jack of All Sports. Hi, I'm Jack from Jack of All Sports, and this is my Week in Review. Boys hockey ended the season 11-7-1. They recently lost to appear on February 5th, 3-5. The Jaguars played five regular season games since their last show, and they went 1-3-1. and one. Red Raider wrestlers wrapped up their season last weekend at Divisional 1 Sectional Tournament in Wausau. Four Raiders advanced to sectionals with the hopes of earning a trip to state. They were juniors Max Burdett and Ryan Freeward, and sophomores Ethan Eggert and Tristan Taylor. Max Burdett came the closest to qualifying, finishing third in the sectional, just one win away from state. Both Eggert and Taylor finished fifth in their weight classes. Boys Swimming had two members head to state, TJ Shaw and Spencer Van Donsel, both headed to state this past weekend and competed in D1. Van Donsel finished 23rd in state for diving, and Shaw finished 21st in the 200 meter freestyle and 20th in the 500 meter freestyle. Congrats to both. Through the past three weeks, the boys basketball team was able to pick up a win, 62 to 55 against Sheboygan South, the Red Wings. The boys were able to pick up their third win thanks to the scoring domination provided by Lemerand, Bramshaber, and Shaw, who combined to score 51 points Awesome. Senior night fe uh, for the Red Raiders featured a tough loss to Notre Dame, but senior Nash Lemeron still found himself in a good company, putting up 24 points, a career high. The other seniors, Bo Bramshiber, Aaron Stajic, and Matt Holloway, each had great performances as well. The boys will be the sixth seed in the playoff bracket and will face Southwest, a team the Raiders only lost to by seven very recently. Girls basketball went on a run for the ages, notching 10 straight wins. Nine of those featured the Raiders winning by 10 or more, and four of those nine were by 20 points or more. Senior night was highlighted by our four seniors, Sheridan Flogger, who scored 11 points, Bella Scott, Danny McQuillan, and Skyler Lukashik, each who contributed greatly for the team in their close loss to De Pere. The Red Raiders' streak was able to propel them to the 13 wins and the second seed in the playoffs. The Raiders will face Southwest Trojans in the second round of the playoffs at home tonight, which you can watch on Strive TV. And that's Jack of All Sports. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Jack, for that super stupendous segment. That was five out of five stars. And now, for what you all came to see, the best segment RSN has to offer, nature. Which is brought to you by Nick Diefenthaler and Jack Hayward. Wow, you two really have outdone yourselves. Once again, proving that nature is the best segment on RSN. That's all we have for you today. Thanks for tuning in. Make it a great day and fun weekend, Raiders.